this hair though <laughs> this hair no this hair ow ow <laughs> this hair though i'm really digging it So I did not expect to stay away for as long as I did after Vlogtober, but it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> I really felt the need to recharge my batteries and get back to reality after having my face buried in my laptop for an entire month of editing those videos. So I do hope you enjoyed it and that you missed me a little bit, you know? Absence makes the heart grow fonder or whatever, you know? I had quite a bit of adulting to catch up on and a bunch of things that I had neglected during the month of Vlogtober. But then a few days turned into a week, then two weeks, three weeks. Suddenly we're at like a month. I don't know how time flew by so quickly, but I feel like I'm finally ready to jump back in, you know, jump back in to start filming videos again. So I'm actually in the process of putting on some makeup right now to get ready to film. And I figured we could do a little bit of a chit chat to check in and catch up on things and you know, just say, hey boo, hey. <laughs> I do typically film my videos at nighttime when it's nice and quiet and when my daughter's asleep and that kind of thing. Today we're using natural light and it's in the middle of the day. The gardeners are out right now. There are cars passing by. There's a TV in the background. So you may hear a whole lot of things. Just go ahead and ignore those. You don't hear nothing but me. It's just me and you, babe, you know? That's all that matters. As a truck passes by in the background. <laughs> so yeah, as a bona fide introvert, I do feel the need to recharge my batteries pretty regularly. <laughs> And I mean, I'm sure we all do. We just do it in different ways depending on our personality types and what works for us and all that. For me, that often means going kind of silent and seemingly falling off the face of the earth just for a little bit. <laughs> I haven't really been active on social media. I've been on Facebook a little bit, just scrolling through a little... I haven't really been on Instagram, haven't been on here obviously, but I do finally feel like I am able to get back into it, to have the energy and the stamina that I need in order to create these videos. I definitely don't ever wanna to get to a point where I'm making videos just for the sake of making them or posting stuff just for the sake of staying relevant or whatever the case is. If we're gonna be doing this, me and you interacting, and I'm gonna take the time to film and edit and post, which is time consuming, y'all. But if we're gonna do this, then I feel like we might as well do it right. And I don't wanna waste your time just putting up fluff, just for the sake of saying that I'm posting consistently or posting every week or what have you. But I'm gonna do my best to get back to every Friday. We'll see how that goes. As long as I have something to say that's of value and that's actually substantial enough to do all of this and to put all this work in, then I'll be here and I hope that you'll be here too. I gotta say though, it's always tempting to take a step back from social media and like the entire internet as a whole because things are so messy and they seem to be getting messier by the day. Obviously the world is crazy right now with the pandemic and the politics and stuff going on here in the States and everything else that has been contributing to the dumpster fire that is 2020. So I do hope that you are well and that you're staying safe and healthy and sane and hopefully happy and content. It can definitely be a challenge so I hope you're doing whatever it is you need to do to stay afloat, you know, to, to remain sane, to stay yourself, and to make it through to the new year where hopefully there will be some new life and new, <sighs> new something. We need something new. 2020, like, we've been trying to cancel this second since like April. So hopefully the new year brings something fresh and new and positive for all of us. I know a lot of us have rejected the the thought of like new year, new me, and the new year's resolutions and such, but I feel like this year for sure, a lot of people are gonna be looking forward to a fresh start starting in the new year. And with the holiday season upon us and how challenging it tends to be for a lot of people in a regular old typical year where there's not a global pandemic trying to take us out, I mean, 
I can only imagine how much harder it makes it for anyone who's already struggling or who would have already been struggling to begin with. So I hope you're good. And some of you already know this, especially if you've written to me before, but I do have the email address down in the description box below. I believe it's unbotheredadvice at gmail.com where you can write to me if you need just somebody to listen, somebody to talk to, dare I say advice <laughs> or anything like that because I know it can be rough. And it can often be easier to turn to someone outside of our immediate circle or outside of our immediate family network in order to talk about some of the things we're struggling with. So if you ever feel the need or feel inclined to, go ahead and email me. Let me know what you got to say, boo. Let me know how you doing, how you holding up, especially with like the social distancing and travel guidelines in place and stuff. I know a lot of us are more isolated than before, which can be even trickier during this time of year, especially if loved ones have been lost or we're just feeling less connected than we'd like. But I am definitely grateful that we have all these digital and virtual ways to stay connected with one another and to hopefully not have to feel so alone at a time like this. The tricky thing though is that I feel like I have such a love-hate relationship with the internet and social media these days because while it can be such a vehicle for good and for spreading positivity and good messages and for staying connected and all of that, one thing that I've learned is that even things that have been created hopefully with good intentions. I don't know if they created the social media stuff for good intentions or just to make money. We sure they doing a lot of that though, cause we're all stuck to it. <laughs> like there's a lot of money to be made, but anything that can be used for good can also be twisted and used for bad, or at least used by people with bad intentions. And so these days I'm seeing that there's also so much misinformation that's being spread via social media and the internet that it's like, damn, can we, can we turn it off? Like, can we just shut the whole thing down? <laughs> Cause I feel like at some point we do have to assess as like the human race, you know, as humanity, the people who are the consumers of social media, we have to be able to figure out whether or not it's doing more harm than good. And if so, what the hell are we gonna do about it, right? There's that um, documentary on Netflix about social media and the effect that it has on us, on our brains, on our behavior, on our activities, our outlooks, the way we view the world and view other people and things like that. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm intrigued. I feel like everything I've heard about it so far just confirms the things that we've already known or already suspected to be true. But I'm somewhat hesitant to watch it because then it's real, <laughs> right? And I kind of feel like once it's all verified, once it's true, right? Once we have the actual scientific information and data that's been collected about all this, then I kind of feel a sense of responsibility to do something about it, right? Like, do we just bury our heads in the sand and continue going along with the same patterns and habits, habits and habits <laughs> that we've already developed knowing the truth and knowing what this stuff is doing to us and the effect it's having on our actual reality? Do we just continue further down the rabbit hole and see what comes next to see where we go from here. Because I mean, I already feel whenever I am on any social media platform, I can literally feel time slipping away from me. I made the mistake of downloading TikTok a few months ago just to look around to, to see if it was something worth getting into, worth starting up, worth learning and all of that. And at one point I tried to exit the app, like to go back to the home screen or whatever. I don't even know if they have a home screen now. I suppose I might be out of touch, <laughs> but I, I kept hitting the back button and all it would do is pull up a new video, like a new TikToker or whatever they call them, just a new person and a new video. And, and I'm like, okay, what? I'm just trying to get out of it. Like, how do I make it stop? And I feel the same thing happens on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook and all these other platforms. As long as we keep scrolling, 
there will always be something there. <laughs> there will always be more for them to show us. And I'm trying not to get stuck in the trap and get as hooked as I know we can get as humans. Almost anything can be addictive these days. And also being very mindful of my daughter who has started watching YouTube videos and stuff. The other night, we were getting ready to wind down for bed, so we started turning off devices. So her, I'm turning off my phone, it's time to turn off the, the iPad and all this. And she said, but mommy, they want me to watch another video. Because after each video was done, it would bring up another video and just a button that says play now. So, so as long as she hit that little button, play now, another video would come. Then when that was done, another video would come. And then another and another. And even stuff like Netflix. If you're watching a show or a series, once one episode is done, it starts auto-playing the next one. So before we even have a chance to decide or think whether or not we want to keep going, it just goes into the next one. All of these platforms are invested in keeping us hooked and keeping us scrolling to the next story and the next story and the next story, which is why I've had to take a break from even things like Facebook, which was the one platform that I used to really like because it's also a great place for actual news stories and for increasing my awareness of things that are going on that may not make it to like the news stations and stuff. But these days, even if I intend to get on Facebook for five minutes or something, it is very tempting to just scroll down a little more. Let's see what the next post is and the next post and the next post. And then before you know it, 30 minutes have passed, an hour has passed, or you've been doing this for even longer than that. And time is just slipping away. Like I can literally feel it slipping through my fingers when I'm on social media. And I don't say any of this to shame anyone else who enjoys it or who spends a lot of time or anything like that. Do what you want to do with your life. That's that's the purpose. You got to live your life the way that you want to live it. But for me, I just feel like there's so many other things that I want to be doing and it gets me it gets me hooked. I feel trapped in there just trying to get out and trying to avoid swiping down to the next story and the next story or the next post. And I find that the groups can be incredibly entertaining, being able to converse with people who are similar to you in some way, depending on the theme of the group. But then those can become very addictive as well. First you see a post that's interesting, then you want to see the comments of the post, and before you know it, you're scrolling all the way up to the top of the comments just to follow the thread or to collect funny memes or something. Like, I could really go on forever about that and about all the, the kinds of entertainment and technology that's at our disposal these days. It's impressive. It's definitely impressive, the amount of things that we've been able to do and how far we've come since I was younger and since I was a child you know there were still some tv stations back then that would turn off for the night you know like there was no programming after a certain time of night now that is a non-issue Hulu, Netflix, Vudu, Tubi like all these different things they have guaranteed that we can always have some method of distraction from our real lives by allowing us to dive into the lives of other people or any movie or any series that's ever been created in the history of the world. That used to be a, a sci-fi concept. Like, yeah, right, that'll never happen. It happened in my lifetime from start to finish, like <laughs> from concept to, to creation. And I'm not even that old. It's definitely fascinating and awe-inspiring to see where we've come and what we've been able to do but man it's also scary because i already feel like i'm being left behind and i'd like to consider myself a tech savvy person for the most part but there's just something new every single day how do you have time to keep up with every new thing and also live a real life in the meantime is it possible i don't know Maybe I just haven't figured it out. Or maybe I just prioritize different things. Even before the pandemic, there was a lot of talk about how people are becoming more and more detached from one another in our real lives and more and more connected virtually. And I mean, I suppose now that's a, 
a positive thing that we have the potential and the ability to do that when we're not supposed to be too close to each other physically. But a part of me is so concerned of where this could all go. Like, this is great, but to what end? The movie WALL-E comes to mind. I believe it's a Disney movie animated about a future time where the earth is no longer viable. I think it was pollution and like the trash and stuff taking over the world basically because all of the things we're disposing of, we don't really have a place to put them, <laughs> you know? Like they still live here with us in landfills or in the trash dumps or wherever they go. That is an actual issue in reality, as well as things like global warming and climate change and all of that. The scientists are telling us that the earth is gonna try to evict us real soon. So I wonder how long before we end up in a reality that they painted in Wally, where all of us humans are out living in space somewhere and everything's automated and we're all sitting around gaining extra weight because of all of the conveniences that are at our disposal and there were these motorized chairs that we all sat in and there was a screen right in front of the chair so we would just float around watching shows eating up all the good food putting on the extra pounds and I wonder how far we are from that right now. And I know there's like the Corona 15 or whatever, you know, the, the weight gain that a lot of us have experienced during this pandemic. While we've been sheltering in place or unable to get out and about as much as we usually would. And a lot of us are hanging around binge watching our favorite shows and indulging in our favorite comfort foods in order to hopefully provide ourselves with some comfort in this world that is lacking any. <laughs> but yeah, how long do we have before we float off into our own individual pods, detached from one another, but interacting through screens and being tied to a screen of some kind and having all these conveniences that cause us to become less self-sufficient and more dependent on technology. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. I was just telling my mom earlier that I thought for sure that after my knee surgery, since I was laid up for so long and unable to walk and dependent on the walker and the wheelchair and all of that, I thought for sure that I would have packed on extra pounds during my recovery. But interestingly enough, it wasn't until after I had mostly healed up once the pandemic was like in full swing and we became more homebound, that I noticed that I started putting on weight, you know? And although I haven't been super focused on weight loss or anything like that in the recent past, I'm also not necessarily hoping to gain any weight because it does take a toll on my body, you know? And it's interesting because the movie Wally is easily over 10 years old by this point. But I'm pretty sure that if <laughs> in the midst of this pandemic someone offered any of us a floating chair that can take us wherever we need to go while we binge watch Grey's Anatomy, which has been my show of choice lately, <laughs> catching up on all those old seasons, and we just press a button and the food of our choice comes out of it, kind of like DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, all those offer right now. I mean... I feel like a lot of us would take it. <laughs> so again, how far are we from that that reality, from that future time that may not be that far in the future after all? But yeah, I'm sure I'm not the only one who wonders what the future has in store for all of us or any of us. Like, things are changing so rapidly these days. Obviously, change is one of the constants of life. Like, if we know nothing else, we know that things are going to change in some way, shape, or form at some time. But I feel like technology has just accelerated it so much more. Things are changing so quickly, so fast, and new information is being disseminated like so quickly. Before you blink, like the entire world could have heard 
about a single news story, whatever it may be, whether it's relevant or fluff or important or not, everything is changing constantly. But then the conspiracy theorist in me is like, but what if that's all a part of their plan? What if they wanna keep us busy and distracted with 17 seasons of Grey's Anatomy so that we don't see what else is going on behind the scenes so that we don't know what they're really up to? What if the point is to keep us scrolling on social media forever and ever and ever so that we can't ever see the bigger picture of what they have going on? I mean, I honestly don't think that that's that much of a conspiracy theory. I'm pretty certain that a lot of what's going on and a lot of what we see is a distraction or is meant to be distracting us from thinking and doing other things. And you know, what better way to do it than to feed us a constant stream of entertainment, whether it's through the traditional sitcoms or movies or reality shows or YouTube channels. <laughs> or uh, social media platforms. What better way to keep us from focusing on real things going on than to make sure there's always something frivolous to focus on, something else to do, something else to choose from. There are so many choices within each of these platforms that it can become overwhelming just trying to decide what to do. I doubt that I'm the only one who's ever gotten on Netflix and spent so much time looking at previews to decide what to check out and what to watch next that I end up just turning off the app altogether because I'm like, all right, I just spent an hour looking at previews <laughs> and I didn't watch anything. <laughs> or on Instagram, you can scroll through the feeds or you can look at the stories or now there's reels. And then on Facebook, they have stories too now and they have all the groups and the pages and the things that you get like, it's just so much. I mean, I often feel the need to recharge my batteries just from spending any time on any of these platforms because it feels so overwhelming to someone like me. And the more that we keep watching, the more we keep engaging, the longer we stay logged on or logged in, someone out there is making a lot of money off of it. And I don't knock their hustle, it's smart. <laughs> it's real smart because they get rich rich off of us, you know? So I obviously went off on several tangents, but uh, all that to say that uh, I imagine I'm not the only one who has to take a step back from a lot of this stuff every now and then in order to get back to living a real life, you know, to do real things as a real person, to have real experiences and make real memories. Life can be incredibly short, incredibly short, shorter than we ever expected. And as far as we know, we only get one, as far as we know. So I find myself constantly having to choose, like do I spend these next three hours binge watching a show or catching up on YouTube videos that I've wanted to catch or watching the latest dating show on reality TV or do I spend it with my daughter making memories or do I spend it on myself, trying to improve my life in some way, learning something, researching something, doing something, anything else, you know? Like, how do we spend the 24 hours that we get every single day when we have more options at our disposal than ever before? It's at our fingertips, really, whether it's a phone or a remote control, it's everywhere. And I'm trying not to get too caught up in filming my life or in watching other people film their lives or watching these fictional shows that were created for the sake of entertainment. I'm trying not to get too lost in those that I no longer have time to live a real life. Let me know if you feel me on that because I can't be the only one. I know I'm not the only one. So let me know if you get what I'm saying, if you can relate, if you feel me on this. Like I said before, I hope that you are well. I hope this world has not been too cruel to you lately. Things are crazy. We're in a weird, unprecedented time. I hope that you're cutting yourself some slack, that you're giving yourself some grace, that you are showing yourself some compassion because we need it now more than ever, 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 ever before. So if that does mean getting lost in a social media app or in a TV show or whatever you need to do to care for yourself right now, cut yourself some slack and do what you gotta do. But at the same time, don't forget that you have a real life to live and real things that you wanna accomplish and real things that might need your time. 
aside from Grey's Anatomy. Luckily, I'm almost done. I'm almost all caught up. There's so damn many episodes. They're real good and everything. But there's so many that I feel tied to it. And when they do the next episode and next episode and next episode, it's like I can't get away. And with all of that said, and more than ever before, I know that there are a thousand other things that you could be doing or watching right now. So I certainly appreciate you being here with me. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video, which I'm kind of hoping to film right now, but it looks like we're losing daylight, so we'll see. <laughs> Bye.